discuss today is called Black Knight, which is a show that is based on a webtoon written by Yi yun Gyun, directed by Cho lee Seok, who worked as the first AD to filmmaker Bong Joon-ho in his 2000 film Barking Dogs Never Bite. And then in 2002, Cho lee Seok made his feature debut entitled Make It Big, which stars Hong seung Un. And then he worked with Kim Woo Bin in his 2016 movie, Master. And so Cho Lee Seok reunites with both Song Seung Un and Kim Woo Bin in this Netflix series, Black Knight. Let's not confuse Black Knight with the 2017 show, The Black Knight, The Man Who Guards Me, which was writing off the coattails of the popular show, The Goblin, The Lonely and Great God, which came out just a year prior. There were several shows that attempted to follow The Goblin, and I don't think any of them were particularly successful. I think The Bride of Habeck is another like pathetic attempt at replicating The Goblin, but it didn't measure up, and it, it was a terrible show. So Black Knight is a 2023 K-drama made by Netflix for Netflix, and when cartoonist Yoon Gyun wrote and illustrated Black Knight, it was released online as a webtoon from 2016 to 2019. So this is a pre-pandemic cartoon. Quite eerie. It's very, it's very uncanny. South Korea's online food delivery service industry is worth about... $2 billion in the year 2017, but then during the 2020 pandemic, it rose to $20 billion. So we're talking like it, it, it grew 10 times what it, what it was. So the South Korean online food delivery industry is now worth $20 billion. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, there were a lot of layoffs and furloughs in South Korea. So quite a few people turned to delivery work in order to make an income. And delivery workers in South Korea don't make a lot of money. The median income is about $3,000. But, you know, that could range from very low income earners to somewhat higher income earners. It's about $3,000 a month. Compare that to the cost of living in South Korea, it's not that much. In addition, delivery workers have high-risk jobs. Traffic and accidents are high in South Korea. Delivery workers also don't get ample time to rest or eat meals or go to the bathroom. These workers are considered independent contractors, so their rights are not protected, like minimum wage, days off accident coverage, workers' comp, insurance, none of these are compensated for. Delivery workers are also the point of contact between the restaurant and the customer. So if the customer has complaints, the delivery worker is the one that has to deal with the emotional labor. Delivery workers deal with a lot of mistreatment Yeah, from customers. If you've seen the show DP, the first episode shows how delivery workers get exploited by restaurants and then are mistreated by Uh, industry workers, and the patrons. Fuel prices have also gone up, and delivery workers are not compensated to make that expense count. So delivery workers have the added expense, and that makes traffic and accident rates higher since delivery workers are trying to make up for that expense with more deliveries in a shorter amount of time. This show, Black Knight, plays with the plight of a delivery driver, in midst of a crisis, a world crisis stemming from chronic air pollution during the end of times on Earth. This end of the world premise reminds me a lot of the show The Silent Sea, which is dealing with a water shortage on Earth. And Black Knight, Silent Sea, these shows do make me wonder why South Korea is concerned with the end of the world. South Korea's air pollution has been an ongoing problem for decades, and there's always been yellow dust storms that would flow in from the Gobi Desert in northern China into South Korea. And I remember standing outside of my apartment in Seoul back in 2010, and there was like nobody in the streets. And I remember like looking around and the whole air just had this like yellow hue to it. 
and I realized, oh, this is the sandstorm, and I'm just like standing outside breathing it in. So I just rushed back into my apartment. Fine particle pollution is uh, different and separate from these yellow dust storms. Fine particle pollution in South Korea is a huge issue. It's a national issue. It's an ongoing issue. It's been a problem for decades. Uh, but that air pollution is definitely from domestic uh, factories and the traffic all over the streets in South Korea. But there's a lot of pollution that blows in from factories in China as well. And I read online recently that South Korea is teaming up with America, uh, the U.S. and NASA for climate research because air pollution in South Korea is in, it's an actual existential crisis in such a small country. Even back when I was a kid in the 90s, I remember air pollution being a problem. And part of the reason why my dad was so eager to move to the United States is to have cleaner air. But of course, we moved to New York City, which had about as much air pollution as as any other city. Uh, that was the great irony of it all. But, you know, even clean water back in the 90s was a problem. Like clean water was, it wasn't that accessible. Uh, drinking water what is what I mean. I remember when I was a kid in South Korea, my dad and I would hike like up into the mountains um, in Busan and up in the mountains there would always be like these um, Buddhist temples and at these temples were always uh, natural spring natural springs so we would go to the spring and then collect spring water in a giant um, plastic container and then that would be our drinking water for the week so I remember I remember little things like that but yeah, air pollution, it's always been a problem in South Korea, and it's only gotten worse. I remember when I was living in South Korea in late 2018, um, that was like air pollution was a real problem. Like every morning, my phone would have an alert telling me not to go outside. Yeah. So air pollution, not only does it cause um, respiratory health issues but it also causes a lot of depression because people are stuck inside they can't open windows they can't step out you know so it's just it's it's not a it's not a good thing clean air and clean water are life sources and while it's easy to dismiss this idea and take such natural resources for granted when people disrespect the environment it really drives me crazy yeah. While I think Black Knight calls attention to issues like environmental awareness and social awareness regarding the working class labor force, it doesn't dig deep into either of these topics that much. And the whole thing just becomes this um, drama around marginalized identities like refugees and mutants that have a political purpose, but none of it really held my attention very much. I think The Black Knight is another example of a TV series adapted by a filmmaker that just could have been a movie. But I do think the fact that these shows are exhibiting a pattern of environmental awareness from South Korean media is something to keep an eye on. And I do wonder if there's like some, you know, political alliance with the United States and with you know, the UN um, that is contributing to these kinds of storylines being out there. Uh, but it's interesting. It's interesting to see dystopic sort of narratives coming from South Korea around the world crisis around water and air. I also wonder if some of this is pointing to South Korea's triumphalist sort of position by triumphalism, I just mean like South Korea used to be this, uh, you know, it used to be this poverty stricken nation. It was war torn. It was, you know, it was dealing with a bunch of authoritarian dictatorships under military rule. It was dealing with national debt crisis year after year. It was dealing with a lot. And very suddenly, Within just a matter of decades, South Korea became this like top economy in the world. And it is now a country that goes to developing nations in Latin America and in Africa to show economic support or health support or military support. 
And uh, these kinds of charitable acts are a way to indicate to the rest of the world that South Korea is a nation that has wealth and political power. And I wonder if these sort of media are also an effort to do the same. Yeah, to be like, well, I mean, South Korea is part of this like (laughs) world saving, um, you know, teamster group along with superpowers like America and South Korea is very much concerned about air quality and air pollution and clean air, clean water, things of this nature. So I do wonder if there's a little bit of that kind of positioning, like self-projected positioning that South, that South Korea is doing through shows like Black Knight and The Silent Sea.